Hello everyone, welcome back. This is going to be lesson number two of the Beginner's Programming uh, Language Agnostic uh, Logic Lessons. Um, my name is Damien, for those of you who might have forgotten, and today we're going to be talking a little bit more about uh, different types, maybe a little bit of data handling, and uh, a little bit of uh, arithmetic. Now, these rules are not going to be universal. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is how rules of arithmetic work in uh, C++ and Java. It's the same for mostly every type of programming language, but since what I am teaching is C++ and Java, there are exceptions where it won't work in other languages. Enough with this disclaimer, because that's what we're doing. So, okay, without any further ado, um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about errors, a little bit about data handling, and a little bit about uh, what you can do with these languages. So, okay, first off, errors. Um, they're commonly referred to as bugs. Oh, and anything with a slash slash, it's 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 a programming habit. Um, slash slash is a comment. It's something you can put in your code to clarify things. So when I do that, that's uh, that's what slash slash means. So I'll put that up at the top. Okay. And again, this isn't going to be programming code that we use, it's just a habit, and I think it makes the formatting a little easier to read. So, okay, errors, they're commonly referred to as bugs, and what an error is, uh, an error is something that prevents our program from working how we intend it to. And it's very important that I didn't say it's a mistake that you made uh, in programming. Say, for example, uh, if we were going to refer to C++, now the correct way to do a, uh, to output something to the screen is C out, followed by two less than signs, followed by a quotation mark, some kind of message, I just said world, followed by a uh, semicolon, right? So we're going to say that this is the right syntax. But this is one type of error right here. You'll notice that I've used these two straight lines just to separate this. The wrong syntax would be something like this. you know, something like that. If we switch around the direction of those uh, signs, then that's actually going to be what's known as a syntax error. And when syntax errors come up, it will make your program not work. Uh, you'll get an error in what's called the debugger. And the debugger is going to be covered in the language sections later on this lesson. Um, that's going to be our primary focus. So, that's one kind of error, and syntax errors tend to be the easiest to fix. Um, there's times where you might not know how something works, where it's a little harder because you're trying to teach yourself how something works at the same time as learning its syntax, so that can be a little difficult. However, um, syntax is a lot like grammar um, in the English language. The more you practice it, the more naturally it comes to you. So syntax is very daunting at first, but at the end of the day, it gets easier. Now, as for uh, the, the big kind of error, the kind of error that we really want to avoid, it's called the logic error. Now, here's an example of uh, a logic error. Let's say that we want to... Um, apply a 5% uh, tax to something, okay? 
So let's say that, so we'll say that our problem apply 5% tax to a total. Now, anybody here with a math background is going to tell you, you know, you're going to do that by taking, say, the total and multiplying that by 0 0.05. But see, the problem with this logic is now you have set the total to 5% of what it was. So in the case of tax, you need the total plus the total multiplied by 0 0.05. And so that's an example of um, a syntax error, or uh, a logic error. And the safe way to do this, and the way that I'm going to begin teaching this, is by using uh, a new variable. So say we'll make tax, and we'll set tax equal to total multiplied by 0 0.05. And so that's the direction that we're going to be going uh, to avoid logic errors at first. Um, as we progress further, we're going to start using uh, different methods of, of handling this. So, okay, moving beyond that, I want to talk a little bit about user input. Um, because user input's kind of a shaky subject uh, early on. Now, for those of you who have decided to watch, you know, both languages, you're going to notice that the way we take in input is dramatically different with uh, C++ and Java. And honestly, it's unfortunate. Java's syntax is a little bit more difficult to understand because it is a little bit more advanced. Um, but there's a bigger problem that I want to focus on user input means that you're trusting your user with how your program runs. And what I mean to say by that is if in C++ we were to do a C in for a variable, let's just say we use the A from before. A was of type int. So what would happen if we input something along the lines of QWERTY? The answer, it would crash your program. So what we're going to talk about later on down the line is data sanitation. Um, but that's going to be a long ways in. So for now, I just want to make it very well known that, you know, even with C in and uh, input dot next, you know, this can be int double float, you know, whatever. Um, whatever the type is there. Um, aside from that, you know, you can crash a program very simply that way. And that happens uh, very often to new programs. Next thing, I want to talk about two things, and then I'm going to wrap this one up because these are really important. Um, we're going to talk about variable naming conventions, and we're going to talk further down about good syntax. Um, and spacing. Good syntax and spacing we're going to talk about more later on, but variable naming conventions are extremely important. Um, they're extremely well known in Java. C++ you tend to see a little bit more leniency in how people name things, but in Java there's a type of notation called camelback notation. And what that is, is it means the first uh, first word is not capitalized. And every word in a variable name thereafter 
is. So here's some examples of variable names with camelback notation. We'll say items on hand, maybe um, cash total, um, total fish. Uh, I don't I don't really know what else. Let's just say uh, Microsoft Windows. You know, things like that. Those are using camelback notation. Um, there are other types of um, notation that you can use. Um, one that you see every now and again, I don't really enjoy it. Uh, it's called Hungarian notation. And what that is, is where you take the type of variable and append that to the beginning of the variable name. So some examples of that might be I, I items on hand, which would mean that items on hand is of type int. It's helpful if you're writing really long programs, however it makes it a little harder to remember how you named your own variables. So that's the uh, the rules. Now we're actually going to change the word syntax here to style. How am I doing for time? Oh no, it jumped over here. Okay, so I have a little bit of time left. So with style and spacing, um, spacing is how we break up our code. Um, and spacing is sort of like how I've broken things into paragraphs here. You know, I have blank line there, blank line there blank line there and it makes it easier to read if this were all just one big blob of text I don't think anybody here would be even trying to follow along anymore it's the same way with the book you know if if you pick up a book and there's no paragraphs and it's just one big block of text you find it very hard to read um, it's just the way our brain handles and processes information you know when we see things spaced out easily it works. Now, later on down the line, we're going to get into what's called nesting. Um, you don't need to know what nesting is yet, but for now, we're just going to run with the rule of nesting is always indented one tab for each level. And what that means is that we're going to have code that looks something like this. We're going to have main to the left, and an example of something that would use a nest is an if. So if we have one if, another if might come off of that, another if might come off of that. We'll have an end if, an end if, uh, and end if. And again, end if is not actually part of a language. Um, and then we'll say maybe this is an else and this is an else if. But as you can see, you know, any it, it follows a very uh, structured bit of code. Um, and this, that sort of structure makes it a lot easier to read. Um, so this is just a little bit about how we're going to be handling things uh, as we progress and how I'm going to code. How I code is not perfect. Um, I'm by no way uh, a, a master at this but you know I have had a lot of people tell me that they like how I do things so I'm hoping that in the future you know you guys will adopt a style at least similar to mine because mine does uh, work alright well thank you very much for watching I'm Damien and this has been another beginners programming logic lesson hopefully you'll join me again next time see ya